are here at the service station. So so hot in here, but we're all. Wait, do you want to be in it? Yeah, Mars was scrolling through TikTok, and my TikToks are coming so up, which is quite happened. funny. You're ruining my feed room. No, Mars was like, I'm trying to laugh, and then your videos come up. I'm set up for the sleeping room. There's literally stuff everywhere. Dad's got a camp bed. I've got a yoga mat. <laughs> Okay, we're here. The cathedral is just around here. I'm scared that seagulls are gonna fit on us. Um, this is like prime seagull spot. There's one coming there. Look, he's getting ready. He's getting ready. I think they did on purpose. I think this was obviously a very special treat and I really value my parents taking us. Um, the decor in here is incredible. So it used to be the old bank and they've decorated it with loads of plants, but also in an art deco, 1920s style. There's gold plating and mirrored backs and it's just, um, it's just exquisite. We're here at the Ivy um, to stand free, and look at this. The chairs have pumpkins on them. I feel like they seated here, us here on purpose. Oh my gosh, these bathrooms are so beautiful. So beautiful. And look at the ceiling, there are flowers on the ceiling. Look at the cubicles too, like Yeah, gorgeous. look at the cubicles, I'm yeah. sorry, toilet tour. Wallpaper the whole way round. Wins the award for the best bathroom Definitely. in a restaurant ever. 10 out of 10. Good morning, um, it's Tuesday and my graduation ceremony is today. Dad's ready, he's there. Mum and Martha are just getting ready and um, we're gonna go for breakfast, which should be really nice. I feel like I've got two and a half of the day today. Um, I've got this spotted dress with pearls and ribbon and then um, I've, oh actually I've got a shawl as well. I'm not gonna wear these later, but I've got sunglasses for now. In the morning we went out for a kind of fancy breakfast and I got yogurt and granola and then we walked to campus and I went up to this room to get my gown and there was no queue at all. It was um, very easy and very streamlined. Um, we are here on campus at the moment, we're just going to have a look around. We've got about half an hour until the ceremony starts. The energy is so nice here, like everyone's so excited and happy. Here we are. Reunited on graduation day. I must say, it did feel utterly surreal. The gown and the cap as symbols, really. Symbols of education, prestige, achievement. As with so many things, though, this final step, bowing to the vice chancellor and receiving a certificate, it is not important. It's the least important part of your degree, in fact. <laughs> This is just where your hard work, effort, anxiety-ridden days and sleep-deprived nights accumulate. In this single ceremony, in this single moment, it's just one step of a much longer journey. The atmosphere was so amazing afterwards. Friends throwing caps into the air just like they do in the films and then failing to catch them as you can see in mine and my friends' multiple attempts. People sipping from champagne flutes, staining lips red with strawberries, mums crying, friends laughing, people taking selfies, families sitting together on steps and looking out over the university. It's such a special and surreal day. So we're just not going to leave now, we're just going to stay in the library <laughs> with the uncollected pros of Yates. Oh yeah, let's get some strawberries and set, set up camp yes, and, and we'll sleep overnight. This is so weird. Really. This is so strange. I can't, I, I literally can't get over the fact like you in, in it as well. No, literally same it's as you. It's so bizarre. I also look quite like grown up. My parents and sister tried on my robe as well. Something which not a lot of people realise is that neither of my parents went to university.
I was so exhausted I hadn't realized just how tired I was so I did get a coffee and we got some lunch from Pratt In the evening we went out for dinner at Herbie's which is my favorite dinner restaurant in Exeter it's all vegetarian and um, the food is just incredible like all of us cleared everything on our plates and we had How was the tea, starters, mains and desserts. Delicious, good for digestion. After all our oh yeah. It's basically been three months since I submitted my last piece of coursework now and four months since I officially left Exeter, like the campus. I already feel really quite removed from the university space and it feels very distant. It's funny how quickly that happens, how quickly we adapt to something new, especially when that new thing has been so daunting, so scary, and there was a time where I could hardly imagine it to be real, so strange. And yet here I am, still the same person, Ruby, 22 years old, Someone who loves literature and writing and long countryside walks, who drinks copious amounts of tea, enjoys re-watching children's films and presses flowers between old encyclopedias, which I will one day use for letter writing. I used to be Ruby, student, but I've already realised that there is more to me than that. However, despite this, um, I have felt very lost and anxious over the last few months and I think that's going to be a familiar feeling for a lot of people who have just graduated. We see the whole way through your degree and basically the whole way through our childhoods people are asking what are you going to do when you're older, what's your dream career, what are your plans, uh, you know, what what's going to happen, give, give me a trajectory. But you could always put it off, um, even, you know, last year I could say, oh I haven't decided yet, I'm going to play things by ear, I'm going to see what happens and yet here we are and I've graduated and I'm getting asked that question all of the time there's not a kind of solid answer that I can give for it I, and I found that quite hard actually. My plan for this year as I said is taking a year out to focus entirely on writing, growing as a writer, working on my writing because in an ideal world that is what I would love to do, I'd love to write professionally. But I don't like to say that when people ask, when people say oh so what are you doing? Um, what are your plans now? I don't want to say, oh, I'm spending a year writing. I do say it, it depends on the person. It feels almost like a cop-out answer and it feels like I'm not doing it right. And I think for anyone who's come out of university and isn't going straight into a grad job, isn't going straight into like a master's program, isn't going straight into something else which is structured, will have the same feeling that I'm that I'm describing. Even if you have gone into a grad job, you might be feeling this. Education prepares you for going out into the world, and yet when you get out into the world, that's not to say that I think we instantly have to be initiated into something that we're going to then be in forever. Like, we don't define ourselves at the age of 21, 22 when we leave university. It's something, it's de definition of the self is a continual process. It's something that changes, that is shaped every day with every decision. Yet, I think, at least, at least for me, I had it in my mind, or used to have it in my mind, that I was going to be a fully formed person when I left university um, and when I left education. So yes, I've felt lost and anxious. To be completely honest with you, I've had pretty much a perpetual feeling of anxiety and like stomach uh, in my stomach. You know that horrible anxious stomach stomach ache. I've had that pretty much continually. I'm working on self care, making sure that I'm um, doing things which will which will help relieve that. But I want to be honest that my mental health hasn't been incredible. And I couldn't work out where this anxiety was coming from, but I know it's the uncertainty. It's the uncertainty of not knowing what's going to happen next. And also that expectation. I don't think people mean to put it on us. So for example, like when I ask a friend, what are they doing now? What are your plans for the future? It's a conversation starter. It's a matter of interest. It's not judgment or criticism. And yet when it's directed towards us, when we're the ones being asked the question, when I'm the one being asked the question, I almost take it, I, I almost take it quite personally. And I'm, it's funny how our brains can misinterpret things sometimes because I think people are just, you know, they're just interested. They want to know. Um, and if you say, oh, I haven't figured it out yet. Like I know if someone said that to me, I wouldn't be affronted. I wouldn't think less of them. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you don't have it figured out, that's okay. Neither do I. And I think that's kind of a good way to be. For basically all of our lives, since we were maybe, since we were three to five years old, 
education has provided structure for us and we've lived very structured lives, we've had to. And so why not try and be unstructured and unplanned for a little while? I'm still working on this because I'm quite ingrained in my structure and routines and I do like structure and routines, but um, I want to this year try and edge out of that a little bit and not structure things quite so much. Just to see how I fare. It's an exciting time. Change and unpredictability are useful, important, interesting things. They make us interesting and that's what makes life interesting at all. Oscar Wilde put it very well uh, when he said, it is the uncertainty that charms one. A mist makes things wonderful. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope that you have a productive week. Mm -hmm.